Right, friends. Um, I'm not sure how to start this video. So just give me a second. Give me a second. Um, so you sent me a lot of books. <laughs> I, oh, okay. Um, right, let's talk about it. <laughs> Right, um, yeah, hello friends. You sent me a lot of books because my cat died. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. I thought this was a classy party. I was saying to my patrons, like, what else can I call this video? What, I've just done another book haul where I got sent loads of books because of people's generosity. And you've, you've, you've bought the, you've bought me these books because my cat died. Like, what can I call? And like, the part, part of me just feels like I have to title the video books you guys bought me because my cat died <laughs> so i don't know if people would take that title wrongly but i feel like what else could i call it like <laughs> it's literally what it, what it is um i just feel like some people might take it wrong <laughs> listen rora would have found it funny <laughs> that Rora, Rora would have liked it. It's what Rora would have wanted. <laughs> I am overwhelmed. I'm gonna be honest with you, I am overwhelmed at everyone's generosity. I don't even know how many books are hit. This is absolutely insane. This is like beyond, 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 beyond insane. <laughs> I am so grateful for not only these, but also all the comments I got on the video where I told you guys about Rora. You know, your comments and your love and your kindness and your thoughtfulness really touched me, really, really touched me. You guys made me cry all over again, pretty much. And I'm glad also that it resonated with some of you who have gone through similar stuff. And um, yeah, I just wanna say the biggest thank you for being there for me. You know, it obviously feels, I guess, quite recent because it was only last week's video where I told you guys, but it's now what, like the 24th, 25th? And Rora passed away on like the, 2nd or 3rd of July. So we've had a little while to kind of come to terms with it. The other cats are doing well. Lux and Miko are in love with each other, obsessed with each other. <laughs> um, but it's still really hard. And I'm not gonna cry again, but I just want to say a big thank you. I also want to convey to you, I'm not sure how I can convey this with while still conveying my immense gratitude at your generosity and your kindness, but this also kind of feels like blood money. <laughs> Scrub it. But I feel kind of like, guilty personally this is nothing on your generosity like I cannot thank you enough but it feels like I'm like hee hee look at my books when like I'd rather have my cat still but obviously that, that can't happen <laughs> so <laughs> you know I you guys are trying to make me feel better and your kindness it's blown me away it has blown me away so we're gonna do a little another book on unboxing even though I've just done one my mum was like you should put Rora's ashes in the shot like front and center so she can watch with you and I went that's a bit far that's a bit far you guys if you had to look at Rora's ashes hey, uh... oh my gosh you look like you're dead but um yeah I, I couldn't title this video anything else you bought me books because my cat died shall we just get into them and open them <laughs> and I say thank you okay now that's out the way let's open books I am so I am completely overwhelmed at how many books there are here what is our first book and who is it from? This is from Emma. We have got Harlem Sunset by Nakisa Afi. The other day when I was doing my, um, when I was doing my <laughs> series spreadsheet video, the Harlem Sunset was underlined in my series spreadsheet since I owned it. I don't own it. I don't own it. I don't know why I was underlined. I was like confused. I was like, do I own it? But now I own it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emma. This is the sequel to Dead Dead Girls, which is like a 1920s murder mystery that I really, really enjoyed. It's sapphic and this is another murder mystery. And I really enjoyed the first one. It was a really impressive debut. I'm really excited to see how the series goes. Emma, if you saw that video, you were like, does she already own Harlem Sunset? I don't. <laughs> well, now I do. <laughs> so thank you so much. This is probably a, um, a series I should make progress in soon because yeah, I really enjoyed the characters of the first one. So thank you so much. And Emma's always on a mission to uh, give me, <laughs> Give me series, give me series sequels to read. I am overwhelmed. What one do I open next? I, I don't, <laughs> this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Oh my God, there's two books in here. I've just got to get one out because I can't see the notes. <gasps> ah! We've got another series sequel. Should we just, let's, I mean, I must see a note. Who is this from so I can thank? I won't look at what the other book is. Okay. Oh, I hope these help keep you excited about reading like you kept me excited to read. Cade, oh my God, Cade has sent me so many books. Cade, you are 
insane. <laughs> so the first book, oh, Seven Lively Suspects by Katie Watson. This is the next in the Three Dahlias series. This is the third one now. And I just love this series. This copy's a little bit bruised. Has it had gotten wet? It's gotten a little bit wet, but it's fine. We live and we learn. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I love this series. It's like a perfect, I always say the, the series is really a love letter to the genre. It feels like a real homage to the murder mystery genre. And oh my goodness, it's summer, 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 summer. My favorite thing about the movie is like, it feels like a, like a movie. It feels like a real like, you know, go to the theater, film movie in this one i believe that there was like a copycat murder of a dahlia lively so basically if you don't know in this series there's a famous detective female detective called dahlia lively like an urquipuro written in a book right and we're following three women who have played her as actresses at some point in their life and i think there was a copycat murder but and a guy was arrested but now it's believed that the wrong person was arrested so thank you so much Cade. and what is our other book <gasps> oh! Oh! Ah! Okay, Kada sent me a book that was not on my wish list, but I am gagged, gooped. Oh! <laughs> so, Kada sent me most ardently a Pride and Prejudice remix. This is like a little series that a lot of authors. I own so many beginnings, which I think was the first in this remix series. There's loads of them now. I really want um, Self Made Boys by Anna Marie McMore as well, which is a great Gatsby remix. But yeah, so they're not retellings, they're remixes. So they're like taking the story and telling it in a new way. So in this one, Oliver Bennett feels trapped. The world thinks Oliver is a girl named Elizabeth. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is going to be absolutely wonderful. You know, since I love Pride and Prejudice so much. Oh, Kate, thank you so much. I had never heard of this author's stuff before, but I'm very intrigued. A Pride and Prejudice remix. Thank you so much, you guys. This is too much. This is too much. Oh, I have to tuck the note in. I'm gonna have to like washi tape all these notes in. <laughs> The amount, the delivery drivers who have been turning up with like five parcels every day have must have been like, what in the hell? This is from Phoebe from Patreon. Sorry it's a little late, but consider this a big virtual hug for me. <gasps> you guys are picking banger after banger after banger. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have got a new release. We have got Imposter Syndrome by Joseph Knox. Joseph Knox wrote True Crime Story, which a lot of you know that I loved. It's a really, really inventive murder mystery, all told through interviews. I don't believe this is mixed media, so, but I'm very intrigued by it. This is about a con artist who meets a woman, a rehab-bound heiress, and her brother went missing, and he looks just like her missing brother. And so I think they agree to, like, he's assuming the brother's identity identity as a last ditch attempt to try and flush out the killer. The family believe he was killed and that other people are like, no, he wasn't. He just disappeared somewhere or whatever. And people start tracking this geezer. So <laughs> this geezer. Oh, he gets on my tits, that geezer. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed True Crime Story. So I'm so excited to pick this one up. You guys. <laughs> it's what Rora would have wanted. It's what Rora would have wanted. Oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed. This is just beyond beyond kind what is this <gasps> is there a note there's a note there's a note there's a note who's it from Catherine you've been in my thoughts I'll get to the series eventually Catherine Catherine you guys are delivering on the series the series progress we have got the brides of high hill by Nevo this is the next in the singing hill cycle oh my god guys I don't know what to do with myself I'm like overwhelmed I'm <laughs> Yeah, this is the next in the Singing Hill cycle. What is the plot of this one? A standalone gothic mystery? <laughs> Drawn into the mystery of what happens to the, the husband's previous wives at a wedding, the wedding night. Oh my God. So yeah, this is um, Nevo's series, it follows cleric Chi as they go around and kind of like gather stories. It's really about the art of storytelling. And that, that synopsis. I'm shaking. I'm shaking in my wrist. Oh my goodness, guys. Thank you so much, Catherine. My goodness. My goodness. How amazing. Okay, next book. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> oh, we've got a paperback. <gasps> Please let me know if you were kind enough. Let me just, oh no, there's a note. It's tucked in the book. 
V, dear Meg, thank you for bringing Bookish Joy Tour. Thank you so much, V. We have got Bless Your Heart by Lindy Ryan. This is a new release that my patrons told me about on a live show. I hadn't really heard of it. And they were like, Megan, this is right up your alley. Was it Phoebe? It was some, I can't remember who it was. It was someone. <laughs> and it's 1999 and it's vampires, baby. It's women killing vampires. It's, it reminds me of Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which I absolutely loved. And yeah, folks are turning up dead and we think that there's there's a vampire. And I really love this cover with like the two bite marks. It just, it just gives me good vibes. It just gives me, it just gives me good vibes. Rise and shine. The Evans women have some undead to kill. I just love women's stories matter. They matter. <laughs> Women's stories matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They just and matter. They yeah. 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 And I, you know. Thank you so much, me. Okay. Ne there's, there's so many parcels still. Ah! <laughs> this is so overwhelming. I cannot thank you all enough. But again, like, I hope I'm not just like, hee hee, books. Like, this is Aurora's memory. I guess it's like her wake. <laughs> oh my god. What is. Okay, wait, okay, this is from Hannah, and Hannah mentioned, there's a lot of books coming from Hannah, and she mentioned that she got me some that weren't on my wish list, so this one isn't. I hope you love this as much as I did. It's a fun and slightly camp murder mystery with a supernatural twist, and has some great witty moments. <gasps> this is one I've had my eyes on. It's blurbed by Janice Hallett on the front. You've never read a country house who done it quite like it. Well, well, Janice, you know, I do trust ya. <laughs> I, trust, I trust Hannah as well. And this is Grave Expectations. A freelance medium is invited to an old university's friend country pile to provide entertainment. Her best friend Sophie tags along. In fact, Sophie rarely leaves Claire's side because she's been haunting her ever since she died at the age of 18. So there's ghosts, but there's a murder and we're trying to solve it. Thank you, that sounds right up my street. Thank you so much, Hannah. Next we have got, <gasps> oh yes. Hannah, I know you've been wanting to start the Miss Marple series. Hopefully this will get you started. We have got Murder at the Vicarage by Agatha Christie. This is the first in the Miss Marple series, which I do really want to start. I know I need to like, you know, hurry up my Urku Paro reading. I'm like craving an Agatha. Maybe I'll need to do a reread of Murder on the Express. Maybe I should just reread Murder on the Grand Express tonight so that then I can like carry on. Yeah, this is the first in the Miss Marple series. I have heard from people that Erky Poirot books you don't really need to read in order. Like I'm reading them in order because I'm a completionist and like kind of crazy, but you don't have to read them in order. There's a few, if you go on like the Goodreads page, there's a few that it says like, if you don't want to be spoiled, you should read this one before this one. There's like a few pairs that spoil each other. But I have heard that the Miss Marple series, you should for the full benefit kind of read it in order because it kind of holds a window up to changing social attitudes throughout the period in which these books are being published which is very interesting so thank you so much hannah i'm very i'm excited oh god agatha i do need to read a bit of agatha soon and then we have got another book that i don't think is on my wish list what is this let me read hannah's note first i really enjoyed this one it's by an author who is from stoke on train like me so i had to read it it's fast paced a bit twisted be like i'm a celeb meets the traitors oh okay the escape room eight contestants one killer are you ready to play Oh, okay, so it's like an isolated island with a mysterious reality TV show. No one can leave. People start dying. Absolutely. <laughs> also, guys, I don't watch The Traitors. I feel like The Traitors is the perfect show for me. Maybe I need to go back and watch it. Maybe I need to go back and watch it because I feel like it's the perfect show for me. I just don't watch a lot of TV. I only watch Real Housewives while I eat my lunch every day. That's it. I watch more YouTube <laughs> than TV. Thank you so much, Hannah. That sounds very, very intriguing. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. This is from Ali. Enjoy your gift. One of my favorites. One of my favorites too. Thank you, bestie. Oh my God. I cannot wait to reread it with this copy. We have got Mad of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. As you guys know, I want to own all of these. <laughs> All of these editions and I just love them. Oh, just look at them. All of these um, hardcover, like, are these cloth bound? What's the word for this? I don't know. I love them so, so much. So I have read The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, but it is a wonderful Agatha Christie. This is really one of the best twists I've ever read in a book. The book is made by the twist, but it is when you read that twist for the first time. And I, I hope, I hope, I wish on you, all of you out there to not get spoiled for this twist before you read this book. It is one of the most like influential, monumental twists. Ah, that's history. <laughs> The same way I think Murder on the Orient Express is a great twist. Like I loved Death on the Nile when I read it, but I don't think that has a great twist. 
Whereas both this and Madonna Express are like incredible twists. So thank you so much, friend. Oh my goodness. Okay, next book, next book, next book. Oh, okay, interesting. We've got another book with a very similar synopsis to one of the books we've just hauled. Who is this from? It's from Sarah. Sending love in this difficult month. I hope you enjoy this book. Sending my appreciation as well for your videos as they keep me company when working from home. Sarah, you have picked well. We have got Miss Ruth Ware, baby. We have got Miss Ruth Ware. Yep, 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 yep. We've got One Perfect Couple by Ruth Ware. Ten Islanders, A Deadly Game, Are You a Survivor or a Traitor? See, very similar. <laughs> this one is a couple show that this couple go on and I think people start dying. Oh, there's like a storm and they get stuck on the island. And here's the thing. I love Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is technically one of my favourite authors because I've given her three five stars, which are The Turn of the Key, The Woman in Cabin 10, and... Oh, have I given her four? The Turn of the Key, Woman in Ten, one by one. I feel like there might be one more that I've given five stars. Anyways, I do love Ruth Ware. I do love Ruth Ware. However, I just feel like some of her recent releases, you know, I've read The It Go. I haven't read Zero Days, but I didn't hear but great, the best things. And I haven't obviously read this. I haven't heard the best thing. Obviously, I'm still excited. I just feel like she's moving away from what I want from her. I want that more mystery. One by one, The Woman in Cabin 10, The Turn of the Key are much more like mysteries. And the synopsis of this sounds mystery-y, but I don't know. I just think Ruth Ware, you need to chill out a bit, take a break. <laughs> But I'm still very excited for this one, you know, because I, I, you know, chances are I'm going to love Ruth Ware. So thank you so much. Very, very excited. Right. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Ballsy! Monica, cat book note. I've been extremely sorry for what you've been, I'm extremely sorry for what you've been going through lately. I'm sending you all the well wishes in the world. Monica. 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 This is one of the books I'm most excited about right now. We have got, I love this. Oh, this just feels so good in the hands, guys. It's like slightly embossed or like the best way I can describe it is like wrinkly. Oh, it feels so good. The Cautious Traveler's Guide to the Wastelands by Sarah Brooke is a new release. I think it's a debut. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. It's like a map of the train. <gasps> It's the end of the 19th century and the world is awash with marvels, but there is nothing so marvellous as the Wastelands, a terrain of terrible miracles that lies between Beijing and Moscow. So we've got this cast of characters who are all getting on this train. They're going through the Wastelands together. This one really intrigues me. From when I first heard the synopsis, there's just something about it that really intrigues me and I love. Oh, shut up. Look, there's like the train logo. Oh yeah. Oh, she's taken it. Oh, she's taking it. I'm I'm really excited. I haven't heard anyone's thoughts on this yet, but this sounds like exactly my kind of thing. This sounds like exactly my kind of thing. You know, Stuart Turton's blurbing it. Oh, oh, oh. Don't you just love reading? I just wish I could just like read every book in the world. Oh, someone got fancy and gift wrapped it. My goodness. <laughs> From Chloe, Megan, I cannot imagine losing my cat. I really hope you and your family are doing well as you can. I hope this gift helps you feel better just like your videos help me. Oh, Chloe. <laughs> Mama, I can stop crying again if I think about it. Oh, what an icon. Let's just like have a little Aurora video in here. Like, let's just like appreciate her for a second. I don't know what I'm gonna choose, but like, she was just the best cat in the world ever to exist. I think if we wanted to get another cat to like fill the void in our hearts, we'd need to get like 10, because she was just the best. Anyways. Chloe, 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 shut, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm finding you quite aggressive now, actually, to yeah. be honest. Queen Bee by Gina Dawson. I am so excited. I've seen so many people hauling this and I've been so jealous. It is a kind of like novella inspired by the world of Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Gina Dawson, but we're following the original witch queen Anne Boleyn baby. And I said when I spoke about this in my, I've got a cat hair. I've got a Miko hair. I've got a Miko hair. I said when I spoke about this in the like most anticipated releases video, Anne Boleyn, I, some of you refuted this, but I, maybe it was like a girl thing in Essex. like. I just feel like it's a girlhood thing to be obsessed with Anne Boleyn. I was obsessed with her. I just thought she was iconic. I thought she was the best wife by far. I just loved her. She just has a certain aura about her. You know what I mean? Like how she's skinny. I think she has a very interesting story. I love Anne Boleyn. Love her. Love Anne Boleyn. So I am so <laughs> excited. So excited. I think this is like a perfect little novella. And some people have said, oh, there's pictures. 
There's illustrations, there's illustrations. Oh my God. People have said you can read this without even reading the series. I would probably recommend, I mean, I haven't read this, but I think you should probably go into this having maybe read Her Majesty's Royal Coven for like peak understanding of like the, the politics by the point in Her Majesty's Royal Coven to like fully appreciate this. But I think it's fine to read it before um, The Shadow Cabinet. So thank Chloe. Guys, this is what I'm saying. Banger after banger after banger. It is perfect. Everything that we work for is right here, right in this moment. What is this? From Lauren, one of my favorite graphic novels. Okay, this is three out of three. So there's other, <laughs> there's other gifts from Lauren coming. We've got Bloodlust and Bonnets. Bloodlust, what is this? <laughs> Guys, look at this. What is this? Oh, it's like Regency era. What? Romantic literature, a tree of queer misfits and several angry vampires. Oh my good yarn, absolutely. This looks so cute and funny. The illustration style is very funny to me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this looks right up my street. Thank you so much, I never heard of it, but I super, that looks so good. No! Sammy! I know you've received so many books, but it's because we all want to brighten your day. <laughs> Sorry for how your past couple months have been. And I hope the second half of the year picks up for you. Ha Sammy, my God, let's all just bring that energy in. Cause like, I feel like this year, the whole year has been a mess. The whole year has been a mess. Personally, professionally, catty. <laughs> Anyways, Sammy got me the box in the woods by Maureen Johnson, which is the next in the Trudy Devia series. I kind of said I'd finished it because I see the Trudy Devia series from what, from what Maureen Johnson said my defense when this came out was that the Trudy Diva series had that original trilogy and the rest of the books were going to be spin-offs but then that doesn't seem that's the case so I think I need to just re-add it to my currently reading series but we've got the box in the words I always have to wait for the paperbacks of these to come out which then by the time it's like a year later I'm like then on to the next year's new releases so it always takes me a while but um I really enjoy the Trudy Diva series I think it's a wonderful YA mystery series really one of my top recommendations if you're looking for YA mystery and then this one I think we're at a summer camp yeah site of a notorious unsolved box in the woods murder case in 1978 oh yes oh yes oh yes I'm really excited I really like what Maureen Johnson does with YA mystery so thank you so much Sammy I cannot wait to make progress in the series and if I'm lying to if I'm not lying to myself I should probably add the whole series back on my on my currently reading <laughs> Ali has got me the familiar by Lee Bardugo absolutely <laughs> This is Lee Bardugo's new release this year, and I've read I've read almost every Lee Bardugo to ever exist. I think the only one I haven't read is The Language of Thorns, which is like a spin-off short story collection um, from the Grishaverse. I've read every other Lee Bardugo. I'm a Lee Bardugo girly, and this one really excites me. It's historical Spanish bewitching novel brimming with peril in the world where women's ambition can prove deadly. I'm not gonna try and tell you the plot of this because every time I've read the plot of it, the plot has gone out of my brain. I can't hold on to the plot of this one for some reason, but this is one of the books I'm most excited for because I love, 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 Lee Bardugo. I love her, I love her. She's my girl, she's my homie. <laughs> I love Lee Bardugo. So thank you so, so much, Ali. I really appreciate that. Oh my goodness, we've got two books. Okay, who are these from? Oh, these are more from Hannah. Ah, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, see, let's look at this one first. I picked these books up based on a recommendation and I love them. The only one I have left to read, so I hope we both enjoy how this series ends. We have got The Midnight Peacock from the Sinclair Mysteries. <gasps> Oh my goodness, yeah. So this is the final in the Sinclair's Mysteries. I now own the last two. So I read the second in the series earlier this year and really enjoyed being back in the series. Now I have to finish the series this year. I just feel like it's a series I can finish. You know, it's middle grade mystery. I feel like I should finish it while they're still fresh in my brain. So The Painted Dragon is right down there. <laughs> you can't really can't see it, but it's right down there. And thank you so much, Hannah, for this, the last one. Oh my God, I definitely have to finish the series now. I definitely have to finish the series. I'm so excited to see how it ends up. And then... Hannah also got me. I wanted to gift you my favorite book. I picked it up from the library on a whim and it made me laugh, cry, and made my jaw drop at one point. Sorry that it's your timeline, but I hope you love it. We have got, I don't think I've ever heard of this, All the Lonely People by Mike Gale. In phone calls to his daughter in Australia, widower Hubert Bird paints a picture of the perfect retirement, packed with fun and friendship, but he's lying. Something has made him turn his back on people and he hardly sees a soul. So when his daughter announces she's coming to visit, he faces a race against time to make his real life resemble his fake life before he's found out. Oh, okay, this reminds me in some ways of the like human element of Thursday Matter Couple. You're following an older character. This does sound really cute. Okay, thank you so much, Hannah. I really appreciate both of your picks that have been like 
surprises have been great picks. <laughs> We're almost there. We've got four parcels left, everyone. <laughs> your honesty, your guys' generosity astounds. Astounds me. <gasps> no. Oh my god. 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 Lauren. 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 <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Lauren has given me one book that was on my wish list and then the sequel to it. Oh my giddy aunt. <laughs> Oh my god. We have got The Mimicking of Known Successes and The Imposition of Unnecessary Obstacles by Malka Older. These are sci-fi murder mysteries. Uh, Lauren says the audiobooks are great. A cozy gas lamp mystery in a sapphic romex set on Jupiter. I've heard really, really good things about this series. They're little novellas, they're easy to get to, and I really love how these covers look together. There's something about it that scratches my brain. Like, they're not the most, like, complex covers are they but there's something about the color schemes of them that i think have been picked really well i've had wonderful wonderful things about this i've had one thank lauren thank you so much and thank you for getting me the second in the series that is so oh i love the teal on that oh my goodness thank you so much next puzzle oh another one from phoebe your channel has been such a light in my life for a few years now and i just love and appreciate you so much phoebe stop it <laughs> sending so much love to you and your family thank you so much we have got i was a teenage slasher by stephen graham jones another new release that i have heard so many things about it's set in texas and we're following like the murderer we're following the murderer we're following a guy who's killed people. <laughs> I really enjoyed The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I didn't love My Heart as a Chainsaw, um, and I haven't continued on that series, but there's something about his plots and the kind of way he frames his books and the writing style that he has that very much intrigues me. And I feel like the plot of this will really suit what I want from him. So thank you so much, Phoebe. Two parcels left, everyone. <laughs> Okay, absolutely. Cade has got me The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. Absolutely. <laughs> Another beautiful edition. This is the first. Oh, this is the first pro. And oh my goodness, I feel so lucky. I, I've got such a good collection of these. Now when I move out, I can really display these in such a wonderful way. So thank you so much, Kate. The, the notes have surprised me. I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me because Kate has gifted me a lot of these. And then our final parcel. What have we got here? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh no, the, the cover's been banned. I'm so sorry. Oh no, that's quite a bad bend. I can live with it, but I feel bad. It's from Emma. So thank you so much, Emma. This is The Witches of Moonshine Manor. I can't remember who recommended this to me. Someone recommended this to me and told me I would love it. And we're following witches. I don't really know what it's about. A couple of modern day witches, a magical high school and wrong, a looming threat. I, someone told me they really, really enjoyed this and it's kind of like a great cozy fantasy. So I'm really excited to get to that one, but I'm sorry. I mean, the cover, I can live with the cover being bent, but I'm sorry to Emma who gifted that to me that the cover's been bent. And then, what is this? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Last few books before I go back to school and have to spend money on boring stuff like rent and bills. I will take responsibility for your team bar growing. You can blame it on me from Emma. Oh my gosh. Emma, you've been so kind and generous. We've got The Kind Worth Saving by Peter Swanson. So now I can make progress in the series because I own a talent, of a talent for Murder, which is the third in the series. But I didn't know if you could read it without reading this one. But now I own this one so I can read it next. This one, I don't think I can really tell you the plot because, well, I'll just tell you that a detective is hired to investigate an ex-pupil's teaching husband. He senses always not quite as it seems before he knows that he's gotten far too close to the other woman. Because I think this one's tricky as what I can tell you with what happens in the first book. There's some crazy wild stuff that happens in the first book. And it really, I think this book is really playing on the dynamics of that. Do you want spoilers? So yeah, I don't want to tell you too much and spoil it, but um, I'm really excited to make progress in the series now that I have two of them. So thank you so much. Well, guys, that is absolutely insane. I mean, how many, I don't even know how many books there are here. This is crazy. <laughs> thank you all so much for your, again, your generosity and your kindness and, you know, your thinking of me and I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed and I feel so lucky. So, so lucky. So thank you all so much. For your kindness. Um, I'm gonna go try and find a way to put these books away somewhere <laughs> and thank everyone individually who sent these to me. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I will see you very soon in another video and I'm sending you all the love, trying to send you all the love that you guys have sent me. So I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!